Hello viewers, it's me again, and uh, I know, two videos in one day, pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> but uh, seriously though, man, that wasn't even funny, but okay, anyways, like I said in my previous video, uh, my Jamestown rotation video, I told you that uh, I was going to make another video today because I have uh, some free time today, and uh, this is my PCR background video. Mm, I understand uh, a lot of a lot of you guys know what PCR is. You know, you've done this a million times, and you've heard the words thrown around all the time. You know, PCR this, PCR that. But for people who don't know, and for people who want a refresher, uh, refresher course on uh, PCR, I think this will be a, a good uh, a good video for that. You know, you know, we use PCR all the time in molecular biology, but you know, do we ever really stop stop and think about what it is? I mean, sure, we probably learned learn about this, you know, when we were undergrad, maybe even high school these days. I don't know, but do we you know really remember, recall, you know, the beauty of uh, of this mechanism? So today, I want to talk about the polymerase chain reaction, otherwise known as PCR, probably one of the most well-known concept in molecular biology. So what is it? Like I said in my uh, tutorial one video about designing basic PCR primers, it's basically you have a DNA fragment that you want to amplify, right? You want to amplify a DNA fragment. And um, to do that, you use PCR, and which consists of um, two primers. It's extremely important. So a primer is a short nucleotide sequence, usually around, you know, 10, 30 uh, nucleotides that are complementary to the template DNA that you want to amplify. And then it attaches to the template and then it starts extending because of the polymerase and then it generates more template and then, you know, more primers bind to those newly created templates and then it goes on and on and on and on and on and it kind of exponentially uh, uh, increases the amount. Actually, the amount of template it increases is 2 to, uh, to, I can't find the, okay, 2 to the n value. Uh, basically, what it means is that you know n let n equals to uh, the amount of cycles you have, right? So let n equals number of cycles. So as you can see, uh, I can't spell. Um, you can, as you can see, this number will get you know exponentially greater and greater and greater. Okay, so what are the steps of PCR? Okay, well. PCR, you know, back in the day, um, they used to have these water baths of different temperatures, and uh, they used to take these tubes and put them in different temperatures, and they would t physically time this, and they would physically stand there for like, you know, two or three hours doing this, and that's pretty insane. I mean, I'm so glad that technology has made it possible to, possible that you know, we have these automated systems now. But with automation, you know, we sometimes lose the uh, grasp and the kind of the purity of the uh, of the process, so I kind of want to go over, you know, uh, what's exactly is happening here. So once you place these PCR reactions in a thermal cycler, right? You have you, the first step you usually see is uh, uh, you do a primary uh, denaturing step, right? And this can range, you know, around 95 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds or whatever. It, it varies on the experiment, varies on the DNA template, you know, varies on your personal preference, but I usually do 95 degrees for uh, 30 seconds. So this step is basically for this step is basically for kind of just completely breaking apart your template DNA into two separate single-stranded um, DNA components because your primers need to get at the um, the sites right of complementary uh, sequences. So the only way to do that is to break them apart. How do you do that? You apply heat. You know, simple as that. The next step you have is uh, actually how to do this. So link these three steps together. So you have another denature, denaturing step. Then you have an annealing step. And then you have an extension step. Okay, so I'm going to highlight these three in red because this is basically where the magic of PCR comes into place. Um, so, 
you have another denaturing step because every time you create, you know, every time the primary is anneal or attached to the template and it extends afterwards, they need to be broken apart again, right? In order to create more template. That's how you get this, you know, exponential number uh, of, of, of products, right? Based on the number of cycles. So these three, you know, going through two, three, four once, that's one cycle. So then it goes back again to two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. That's how, you know, that's where N comes in, the number of cycles. So, you know, every cycle needs to denature the templates again. So that's where you have this denaturing step. So then you have an annealing step. It's basically when the PCR um, attaches to the complementary strand. Now, this step is very important. It's very uh, temperature dependent because, uh, oh, excuse me, be, um, because, um, for your primers, you have a TM value, right? So primers have a TM value, which means that, which stands for, you know, melting temperature. And basically at this point, it's where you have 50% uh, of your primers uh, uh, annealed and then 50% that are not annealed. So, it's kind of like the stability temperature limit of your primers and template. So your annealing step is based on your TM value, actually. And what people have uh, found out, how what researchers have found out is that you want to have your annealing temperature, you know, your annealing temperature, let's call it TA, equals to like five degrees uh, less, you know, five degrees uh, less than your lowest TM value. And at that point is where you have, you know, great annealing happening. Because if your annealing temperature is too low, then you have a bunch of non-specific uh, binding. But if it's too high, let's say above your TM value, then as you can imagine, you know, a lot of your primers are gonna start getting degraded and this is not gonna stick at all. Because your TM is kind of your halfway point. So anything above it will start causing problems with annealing, but anything below it will cause too much annealing that you know your primers is gonna be sticking everywhere. So people have found out that around five degrees less than your lowest TM value of your two primers is good. So that's why when you're designing primers, you wanna to have to make sure that the two TM values of your primer are very close together, like around you know 60 degrees, 65 degrees, etc. Um, people usually say between 55 to 80, but I don't, 80 is quite high, so I would say between 55 and something lower than 70. I would say 55 and 70, 80 is quite high, but regardless. Moving on, so then you know you have the annealing step, so the primers bind to your template. So next you have the extension step, and basically what that is, is that um, you have your primers and your template, right? And then you, the polymerase comes in, Okay, the, the, the polymerase comes in and then it starts to extend your primer, you know, uh, you know, either, you know, uh, extend your primer always from the, you know, five prime to three prime in. So start extending in that direction. And then that's how you, um, this is the step where you add, uh, add nucleotides, right? New, new nucleotides, I can never spell, it's called DNTPs, okay? So, uh, so start at nucleotides, DNTPs, and this is why you also add uh, magnesium ions, magnesium salt, you need the magnesium. It's a cofactor uh, for the polymerase, or else, you know, the extension step wouldn't happen. So you need a uh, uh, magnesium in this step. You can use other salts, I believe, like uh, calcium, uh, I mean, not not not, not calcium, uh, potassium, I think, but but most people use. I mean, now it's been standardized as magnesium, uh, but I think it's probably the the it's, it's the optimal uh, kind of the the ion that you want, um, the, the salt. But I believe other salts will also work as well in the based on the review paper that I read. But anyways, so that's what you need. You know, salts. You need D, uh, DNTPs, which are the nucleotides. This is kind of where the magic happens, whereas you're creating, you know, the co full complementary strand to your template. So, so you repeat four, uh, 234, 234, 234, set number of cycles, usually I've, you know, between 30 and 40 cycles. And then after that, um, oh, why is, I don't want this to be in red. After this, uh, hold on, I'm going to change this back. Okay. Yes, okay, so after that, you people sometimes do it like a final extension step, right? Um, yeah, final extension step, 
So this is basically make sure that the polymerase goes all the way through and you really do have, you know, the really nice uh, extension template um, attached to the uh, primer. But this really occurs if you have a really large template, I guess. You want to have a, you know, long extension step. This is kind of optional. And then lastly, you know, you can set the machine to be at four degrees, set it to, you know, to infinity. You know, just keep your PCR products. If you know if you're doing this late, the next morning you can run it on a gel and take a look at it. But overnight, you can keep it at four degrees. So something I've got to mention is an extension step. Um, you want to uh, you you usually have uh, it's the 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 the, the oh, sorry, oh, I can't talk today. <laughs> the formula is that for every kilobases that you want to extend, it's one minute of time. So you know. Yeah, so that's kind of the rule of thumb that people usually use. Okay, so basically to, uh, now I'm just gonna kind of go back uh, to review what I talked about for this video. Again, I'm gonna make a second video and uh, uh, kind of a follow up to this, some of the more uh, nitty, nitty gritty details, but not really, just some figures, I guess. But basically PCR, polymerase chain reaction, is used to amplify your desired piece of uh, DNA. Um, you create an exponential amount based on the n or number of cycles that you run into the machine, and you do a primary denaturing step to you know completely uh, dissociate the two strands of template DNA. Then you run two, three, and four, which are cycles of the uh, of the D of the PCR process, in which you create template you know denature those templates. Uh, anneal the primers to those newly created templates and then extend those uh, extend those out and that's why you have uh, these three steps are extremely critical and uh, the temperature and time varies depending on personal preference preference depends on the type of polymerase you use depends on the DNA quality depends on the nature of the experiment um, but some general rule of thumb is that the annealing step it's, uh, the annealing temperature is 5 degrees C less than your lowest melting temperature of your two primers. And your extension, um, the time anyway, is uh, 1 minute for every uh, uh, 1, K, uh, 1 KB or 1000 nucleotides. And uh, then you have usually a final extension step. I usually see this, see this around 10 minutes, I guess, to kind of fully, um, to make sure that the polymerase goes fully outwards and you know creates the uh, complementary strand. This again is optional depending how long your fragment is. And then lastly, set the machine to four degrees Celsius for infinite time. Well, no, just well, it's not infinite, but you know, it just means that um, you can keep it overnight or whatever. And the next day you can take out the PCR reaction and then you know PCR purify it, run it on a gel, you know, whatever, and it'll be perfectly fine. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I know that was kind of rough. I didn't really practice this. Actually, this is my third take of this video. The first time, first two times, I completely screwed up. <laughs> it was actually uh, harder than I thought. This is kind of doing this kind of uh, impromptu style. But I think this one, this video, I think I'm pretty much I'm gonna post up. But um, if there was anything that wasn't clear or something you wanna ask me or um, anything else, just go ahead and post your comments below this video, and um, I'm gonna. You know, I'll edit this and render it, upload it. And while doing that, I want to make my second PCR video, which is kind of basically my part two of this whole speech thing. And yeah, I hope you guys find this somewhat uh, helpful. You know, a good review at least, or you know, a little bit, or at least you know, amusing or whatever. But yeah, let me know. You know, just write your thoughts on the comments below. Um, and uh, if you want, subscribe, I guess. So yeah, until uh, until next time, I guess. Uh, I'll see you guys later.